So this take is centered around my beloved Phoenix Suns. Uh, I told you this one in person, but obviously uh, I'll refine it. I'm sorry, refine it a little bit better. Uh, my take is Chris Paul has served his value to the Phoenix Suns. Now, this is not a trade request or a trade demand. What this is implying is he has a pretty hefty contract and he is not able to stay on the court very often now. And he might even, you know, slot into a very minor role in the playoffs as in, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes to sustain himself. But what I'm saying is, is that his impact of changing the culture, getting the best out of Devin Booker and the other young guys, that's the value of that contract. And that will pay dividends probably beyond his retirement. You know, I think he really has turned the trajectory of Phoenix around. You know, we had a decade of mediocrity and he's come in and he has obviously had a lot of impact on the court. But now that he's off the court, you're still seeing that impact. And, I, you know, we've obviously reclaimed the top of the West spot. And we're also putting our head down and doing the work. Very similar to Boston. Obviously, we've got more to prove. We had that big flame out in Game 7. Um, but a lot of good things out of Phoenix without Chris Paul being there. So your take is you've had half a week to refine it. Is that CP3 is worth every dollar? Is that your take? <laughs> C yeah, CP3 is worth every dollar. Um, you could make an argument and say that it's a steal. You know, he's got that. It, it's almost akin to Udonis Haslam on Miami, how they just keep giving him a, a contract to, to ride the bench, but he's, you know, that veteran assistant coach stuff. Chris Paul obviously had those two years of impactful play. He will still have some moments of impact this season, but I don't think it's fair to expect that he's going to play more than 50 games uh, and, you know, there's going to be some rest and management to get him into the playoffs, but it's, it's the culture. It's really the culture. I think we'll still be talking about Phoenix in five years and it will be directly in part because of Chris Paul's impact. Who's your coach in Phoenix? Monty Williams. Yeah, correct. Monty Williams. Are you saying Chris Paul has a greater influence than Monty Williams? In the culture? I'm saying Chris Paul's part of it. Absolutely, he's one of yes. 15 players or no, so. I'll, but... I'll, I'll, I'll jump on it straight away. Yes. So I think one of the issues, we see it in everything, right? Peers have more influence on us than people who are theoretically in a hierarchy above us, right? So, you know, you see it with school children that the friendships and the relationships they have are far, far more important than their parents and their teachers' opinions. Right. It's the same as workplaces. You find more commonality with people that you work with on the ground level uh, than you do with management. So I think it's exactly the same. I think Devin Booker is listening to a guy who, you know, isn't in the league anymore, isn't isn't current and is like, OK, yeah, like good advice. Rah, 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 you nod, nod, nod. And then Chris Paul comes along, who is in the lead, who has excelled in the league. And he basically says, this is how you do it. And people can follow suit. And it's the reason why veterans, you know, this is probably another take, but veterans in the NBA are starting to lack. And there's probably a case to be made that they need to come back a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I would say Chris Paul is a direct I, impact. I think, look, I, I'm not going to disagree that Chris Paul's uh, value in Phoenix is clearly significant. Uh, I, I think the reality with when you make a trade, especially for like a superstar, an all-star like Chris Paul, that it's it's based upon sort of your win-loss tally. That's probably the easiest way to judge how successful a trade is. So when a trade occurs and an all-star player changes teams, if they go to a new team and they win more games, if they advance another round in the playoffs or through the to the finals, obviously like the Suns did, okay, uh, even if it's a once, Okay, that's the, the a bit of an irony there. It's not that they have to necessarily do it every year of that contract even. Even if they do that once, it's like the Jimmy Butler in the T-Wolves situation. Uh, what a successful period he had then because he was one of the key pieces to get that team that hadn't you know missed the playoffs for many years to the playoffs at that point. And now I think were they eliminated first round, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, that was it. Okay. But still that was a successful trade because of that. And I think CP3 definitely, you know, no one can argue that. I think I'm saying here that I think there's a lot of things that came together that worked to really amplify the CP3 success story that he is because you mentioned uh, ud obviously haslam yeah obviously um you know at, at the heat and he's not an impactful player on the court yeah he's not your starting you know player he doesn't play many minutes and things like that but the value of such players like ud 
back in the day, like Vince Carter, when he was obviously at the last few years that he was playing, and other sort of um, veterans that obviously have been all stars in the past and, uh, you know, had, had really successful careers, won a lot of games, got to the finals, maybe got a ring, things like that. These players are valuable in the right situations. So I think CP3 is one component of that. Absolutely, not going to disagree. But Monty Williams, I think, coming there uh, uh, as a coach there and his sort of philosophies he's brought in and the way of style of play that he's brought into the Phoenix Suns. I think the alignment of Booker with CP3, no one can argue this either, has been highly successful because it was a perfect timing. Booker had spent all these years going nowhere, going nowhere. And suddenly now he's paired with this player that's been an all-star you know, obviously been really successful and, um, you know, he's, he's ready to listen at that sort of point. So I think timing has been really fortunate for CP3 when he arrived at the Suns. Uh, and he's definitely a big component of that. Don't get me wrong. But I think there's other people uh, uh, and players ultimately that also have to be part of the credit here of the culture that has developed now at the Suns. Either way, we've got to talk about the Suns. <laughs> 